Okay, guys, thanks for coming. Uh, my name is Andy Deemers, Chairman for uh, Citizens for Sensible Legislation. I appreciate your time this morning. Uh, I'd like to introduce uh, a couple of speakers that we have really briefly to uh, make some points about spending and taxation here in New Hampshire. Uh, first, I'd like to represent, uh, introduce Representative Jen Coffey from uh, Merrimack District 6. Thank you, Andy. I'd like to basically bring you all up to speed as, as to basically a general overview of what's been happening in our state legislature. This year we have a $250 million budget shortfall. There's a $110 million that the legislature has tried to steal from the medical malpractice fund. There are 42 new in or increased fees that the legislature has passed and the governor has signed and the list, it just simply goes on. One thing is clear, the New Hampshire State Legislature has let state spending get completely out of control. And let's be honest, this is a democratic controlled legislature. The Democrats control the State House with 56% of the members, 44% Republicans. The Democrats control the Senate with 14 members to 10 Republicans. We have a rubber stamp Democrat governor, and Democrats control three of the five seats on the Executive Council. To put our current perspective into a little historical perspective, I'd like you to think about this. There are 79 governors of New Hampshire, 200 years to reach a state spending of $1 billion. That is 79 governors took 200 years to reach a billion. But in only six years, Governor Gene Shaheen doubled state spending. Gene Shaheen abandoned the no new tax pledge and signed into effect the first ever statewide property tax. While these issues are 10 years old, they're indicative of what the current leadership of the Democratic Party has a long-term strategy to do, and that their tactics that they're using to try and implement this. And that long-term strategy of the Democratic leadership in New Hampshire is to change our state political culture, to significantly increase the size and scope of our government. One of their main and most successful tactics so far has been to overspend us into a very serious fiscal crisis. House Ways and Means Chairman Susan Almy, a Democrat from Lebanon, has said that this tax summit will put an option on the table. There can be no more denying the obvious. The current New Hampshire Democrat leadership wants a sales and an income tax, and they don't care that you know about their intentions. Why is, what's not so obvious to most folks? is that this is a key way that they can use to radically increase the size and scope of government. We have a sales and income tax, what happens? We have an entirely new department need. A whole new department will have to be created. These taxes are going to have to be administered. The funds will have to be dealt with. That is a larger government. The Democrats want to radically increase the size and scope of government. The problem is that spending in the New Hampshire legislature is completely out of control. The legislators in New Hampshire need to understand that the solution is to rein in state spending, not engage in out of control spending, and then look for more ways to fleece the New Hampshire citizens. I'd like to ask you to join me in welcoming Dr. Jim Forsythe for a few more words. Thanks. Thanks, Jim. Good morning, I'm Jim Forsyth, Treasurer of a Citizen for Sensible Legislation and Chairman of the Republican Liberty Caucus of New Hampshire. I want to share our views on the tax summit going on over the next two days. The summit includes many proponents of a broad-based sales or income tax, including House Ways and Means Committee Chairwoman Susan Almey. New Hampshire has one of the lowest tax burdens in the nation due to its current tax structure, which is focused at the local level rather than at the state level. When taxes get too high, citizens can show up at their town hall meetings and vote down increases in spending. Locally, spending and taxation are controlled by the taxpayers themselves. Adding a broad-based tax or income tax, sales or income tax, would completely shatter New Hampshire's tax advantage by separating the control of spending from the source of the revenue. Put more plainly, a sales or income tax would take the power to control spend and taxation away from the people at the local level. This would inevitably lead to the growth in the size of government and an increase in our overall tax burden, as it has done in every other state that has added a sales or income tax. It's unfortunate that the current legislature seems to spend more time talking about how to increase revenues rather than reduce spending. The House Ways and Means Committee should have held a summit to talk about spending cuts, not a summit to find how much more money they can take from New Hampshire citizens. This is a problem of too much spending, not insufficient taxation. The legislature should pay close attention to the mood of New Hampshire citizens. Due to the economic crisis, everyone in the state of New Hampshire has tightened their belts, except for the state legislature. 
New Hampshire voters are incredibly angry over the declining economy and their heavy tax burden. Increasing their burden by adding additional taxes is likely to result in a vicious backlash in 2010. Thank you for attending today. I also want to introduce Dan Itzi. He's a representative from Fremont. He's considered by many to be a New Hampshire constitutional expert. Dan. Thank you. I'm also on the board of directors of the Citizens Leadership of New Hampshire. The people of New Hampshire have a written constitution for one reason only, and that is to give them a tool to enforce upon the government, to limit the laws which those of us in government are allowed to make. Article, part 2, Article 6 of our Constitution describes the taxes that we are allowed to impose upon the people. An income tax is not one of them. An income tax in New Hampshire would not be a lawful tax. And when you take property from an individual unlawfully, it is known as one thing, stealing. It is time for the people of New Hampshire to get familiar with and to enforce their Constitution upon those in government and for those in government to take heed to their to those whom they serve the people thank you thanks all uh, for coming today I appreciate your time thank you Uh, they want to create broad-based taxes to increase, you know, government in New Hampshire to create new departments that will be used to collect and distribute the revenue. So, yeah, I'm convinced that the spending is already negotiated. No, thank you. Yeah. 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 What is your position on online? Uh, very simple. Uh, part 2, Article 6 states that the public charges of government may be paid by taxation of coal and property. And in uh, 1903, it was extended to include uh, other forms of property, including franchises and property that passed by will or inheritance. During the discussions in 1903, it was pointed out that transfers, sales, and income are not property and are therefore not taxable, and it was explicitly stated in those debates that it was not believed that the amendment to Article 6 extended it to include income. So it, it's very clear uh, that, that it's never been amended to include income, and in fact, in the 1800s, there was a uh, Supreme Court case, Curry versus Spencer, in which it was determined, or uh, adjudicated, I should say, that uh, an income tax and a property tax are unconstitutional as not being reasonable because they were double taxation. So our Constitution is clear. It allows us to tax property because that is the evidence that the state is doing its job protecting the people's right to enjoy their property and require possession. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Good seeing you. And give me a call.